as a PA in the United States, sometimes we forget or just don't even realize that PAs are working all around the world, that countries other than the U.S. have a PA profession. So I'm on a mission to learn about PAs from other countries. And today I'm going to be talking to a physician who is director of a PA program in Germany. He's going to tell us about the state of the PA profession in Germany, what the schooling is like, what the scope of practice is like, and even if U.S. trained PAs can go work in Germany. <laughs> so if that sounds interesting to you and you want to know if you have the opportunity to work overseas, then please stay tuned. Yeah, hi, my name is Peter Heistermann and I am Program Director of the Bachelor's Degree course in Physician Assistance at the Fliedner University of Applied Sciences. Secondly, I am the founding chairman of the German Association of Physician Assistants. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Peter. It is so great to have you here today. It's my pleasure to be here and thank you for the invitation. Now, just to clarify, though, you yourself are not a PA, correct? Yes, I have to admit, I, I am not a PA, and uh, I, I know this shouldn't be, because I feel the education of PAs should uh, lie in the hand of PAs themselves. But uh, the PA in Germany is a, a rather young profession, so I think we will have to wait a few more years until our own graduates are able to fulfill the job as a pro program director or being a professor. But I hope I, I will see it. I'm sure you will eventually. I mean, it took the U.S. A, a while to get there. So let's talk about the state of the PA profession in Germany and where it stands right now. Is it a legally defined profession? No, no. Physician assistants are not yet regulated by a law. So they do not fall under the so-called healthcare professions with their own professional legislation, such as doctors or nurses, as you know it uh, from the US. Only in Saxony is uh, their regulation in form of a further training ordinance. But due to the federal system in Germany, the government generally only provides the framework conditions while the federal states are responsible for determining the implementation. Although the Ministry of Health is planning uniform legislation for the healthcare professions, this process is far from complete and does not include PAs yet. On the other hand, this gives the universities the opportunity to further develop themselves with a focus on academization and to establish standards for quality assurance uh, without interference from the state. Roughly how many PAs are there in Germany right now? As we have no register for the profession, uh, it is my university association who does this. And uh, according to the current survey of data from its member universities, which the university association carries out every year, there are in October um, 2023 is around 3,000. And the number of enrollments is at over 1,500. So rapid increase in the number of working PAs can be expected in the near future. And the transition into the profession is generally very successful. I have so many questions. I'm going to have to try to, to figure out where to start because I'm wondering how, how they, they work without it being like a defined or legal profession. And we'll get to that in a minute. But I want to finish up on the schooling. So how many PA programs are in Germany? We have 26 uh, member universities, um, but only um, about 20 are uh, active offering PA programs or plan to do it in the nearer future. But, um, but as the PA is not yet regulated by law, at a federal level in Germany, there is no state certificate comparable to a medical license to practice medicine. So um, we have the pro problem that we have restrictions on admission to, to studies compared to universities um, outside Saxony. And um, as state regulation is not to be expected in the foreseeable future, the University Association has therefore developed a draft regulation that contains voluntary commitments to quality standards and will offer voluntary certification as a substitute in connection with standardized practical examinations 
as you do it um, in the US or in the United Kingdom and written examinations. And we did the first nationwide exam successfully uh, on October, Friday the 13th. Yeah, so just this past October. Yes, yes. Just for clarification, like what is the degree that they come out with and is it standardized across all the different PA programs? The uh, degree of the PA uh, is widely on a bachelor's level. We have uh, three universities that offer PA programs at a master level. Um, in general, um, the PA programs are offered by uh, universities of applied sciences, um, not by medical schools. They are also um, not so-called state examination courses for like for physicians, which are um, subject to legal standardization. The degree programs are therefore approved by so-called accreditation agencies like your AACPA, which in turn are controlled by the state. But the criteria for the accreditation of PA degree programs are not standardized, but um, they are, as you asked, largely based on a recommendation by the German Medical Education from 2017 and the content of medical studies. As a result of this um, voluntary agreement, the training content is largely, largely identical, which means that the curricula and module handbooks are easily comparable, even with the US. However, there are sometimes considerable differences in the proportion of online teaching, practical exercises, and clinical rotations, and so on. I don't know if you know what the clinical rotations in the U.S. is to be able to compare, but we have certain clinicals that we have to do, and then we have some electives, but we don't rotate through all of the specialties. How are the clinicals set up in Germany? Yeah, that is a, a problem. We um, made a comparative study um, concerning uh, U.S. and uh, German PA curricula, and they were rather similar concerning the um, medical themes, but they had differences in administration, scientific work, and in the clinical rotations. In the US, we saw they are very clearly structurized. And um, in, in Germany, it is not the case. So um, it is changing between uh, internal disciplines and surgery, oncology and outpatient sector. But it uh, should uh, be structurized better. Well, I'm sure that that will evolve as the profession evolves. I'm curious, since some of the programs, you said three of the programs, I think, are already a master's, is there thought that the master's is where you guys would like to head? Or is it, do you think it'll stay a bachelor's for a long time? Honestly, I don't know. I feel um, the bachelor's degree in Germany is uh, sufficient for uh, the, the medical tasks they have to uh, provide um, in the moment. I saw your master's program at the University of Kentucky, and um, they focus on uh, clinical themes. And uh, our bachelor programs also have a lot of uh, uh, medical sciences. And uh, so there are a lot of differences. Yeah. But um, I feel we need masters for the academic pathway to open it for them, because we need master PAs to promulgate and uh, get a professor and research and lead the PA programs on the one hand. Um, and on the other hand, it is really tricky because the academic level of a, of a master is the same as of a physician. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the European quality framework for universities, um, it is the same level. So um, in, in Germany, the physicians are not uh, aware of this in the moment. Mm. But if they were, they would, uh, I think, uh, act against it uh, even more. One last question about the schooling before I move on, because it's a big debate here in the U.S. Our national organization has voted to change the name to physician associate. So is it 
even a debate there in Germany? Has there been talk about that? This is a very interesting question um, because we, we had a model uh, to call them Arztassistent. It is a translation like physician assistant. And, okay. uh, and we had the debate whether we call them Arztassistent in German or physician assistant in English. But uh, in the end, we uh, came up to, to name them physician assistant, uh, as they are called in a, a lot of parts in the world. And as we made this decision, you in the US decided to, <laughs> to name them physician associate. Oh. Um, but now we decided we leave it uh, like it is because um, we, we, have to, we have to struggle that uh, the, the people get to know the name. So I'm curious if PAs aren't licensed, if they're not a recognized profession, how are they being utilized? The scope of practice of PAs in Germany differs a lot from that of PAs in the USA, mainly in the level of medical supervision. When working with patients, core medical activities such as surgical procedures and invasive examinations may not be performed by PAs at all while uh, other core activities uh, such as making diagnosis and drawing up treatment plans may only be performed by PAs in a preparatory and collaborative capacity. We are aware that in clinical reality, the independence of PAs often goes beyond, beyond these limits, but it is a legal gray area. Outside of medicine, in the narrow sense, these restrictions do not exist, meaning that PAs in Germany can perform management functions and tasks in the medical industry, administration and research without any problems. The curricula therefore contain more content on process and quality manage management as well as uh, scientific work. As a comparative study we recently um, conducted showed. Are PAs in Germany like allowed to write prescriptions for medications? Are they allowed to order and interpret x-rays and lab tests and things like that? Overall, the uh, depth of uh, supervision by a physician depends on the delegated activity on the one hand and the qualification of the PA on the other. In general, the more dangerous an activity is, the closer the supervision must be, and it can be looser if the PA has the appropriate qualifications. Prescribing medication, as you asked, and uh, requesting X-ray examinations and many formal certifications may not be carried out by PAs. So-called core medical services, such as making a diagnosis or drawing up a treatment plan, cannot be delegated to a PA but uh, preparation and cooperation are permitted. Okay, so the physicians, they're the ones that actually assign what the diagnosis is and they order, interpret the test and prescribe the medications. So the PAs sounds like that right now their duty is to implement the plan that the physician has put into place. Yes, that's, okay. uh, that's uh, the situation in the moment because we have this a little bit outdated health uh, laws in, in Germany, which only allow physicians uh, to perform medical science. So are there NPs that, that practice in Germany at all? Is that a profession that's that's known in Germany? No, it's, uh, it's the same uh, problem. Um, in Germany, nursing is uh, predominantly a, a vocational training occupation. Academization is uh, still in its infancy, which is why there are only a few NPs compared to other countries like the United States. In addition, the focus of their scope of practice is on nursing activities. There are scattered efforts to transfer medical activities such as wound management to special trained nursing staff in pilot projects or to integrate them into telemedicine. And there are currently no signs of uh, professional independence in the sense of re reserved activities for nurses. Is the thought of a PA something that you think is universally accepted among physicians or that they're thinking about or that they would like to have? Anecdotal reports from, from blog posts and the bachelor thesis uh, paint a very ambivalent picture and suggest that at least some of the public prefer treatment by a doctor. 
Yeah. And uh, you asked whether whether the uh, medical community feels uh, good about the PA, and um, this is also very ambivalent. Um, in smaller studies, the relief provided by PAs and the cooperation with, with the doctors are viewed very positively. <laughs> but fears are also expressed by medical associations that PAs could jeopardize patient safety, replace doctors at low cost, undermine the medical profession and hinder continuing medical education. There's no evidence to support these assumptions. On the contrary, the demand for PAs is very high and they enter the profession without any problems. Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds like a lot of the things that we're, we're facing in the U.S., even though we have over 200,000 PAs and, and way more NPs, you know, we have such a shortage of healthcare providers in the U.S. We need more people, like even with all hands on deck right now, we're still short. How is that situation in Germany? Is there a physician shortage? Yes, we, we have a shortage, um, but it is not at first a shortage in, in numbers of physicians, but in working time. Because uh, a lot of the, uh, the younger physicians want to have a better balance and they don't want to work uh, 60, 70, 80 hours uh, a week anymore uh, as my generation did. And uh, so um, the, the increasing, only slight increasing number of physicians uh, is not enough to fill this gap. And it's always hard to ask, like, what PAs over in Germany make because, you know, the money is not going to make sense in, in trying to do translation and, and things and the value of, of the money. But I'm curious, like, is the pay fairly low at this point or is it kind of a medium salary in Germany? Yeah, you can name it a medium salary. And the problem okay. is uh, there is currently no separate collective agreement for PAs uh, in the inpatient yeah. sector. Uh, unlike for, for doctors or nurses. Um, as a guideline, PAs are therefore grouped according to their academic degree as a bachelor. And in addition for this formal classification, the actual area of activity and the willingness of employers to provide appropriate remuneration play a major role. Yeah. The range of income achieved is therefore very large with a wide range around the median of currently around 3,800 uh, euros. The willingness in the outpatient sector to pay these salaries is currently significantly lower at between 2,500 and 3,000 euros, which will not be accepted by the PAs. So most PAs right now, do you feel in Germany are working inpatient? Yes, we. Uh, I, I apologize. We we don't have to feel it. We know it. Oh, okay. Know it. <laughs> okay, because uh, we we did a big survey two years uh, ago, and according to the results of this first representative uh, survey um, on career entry and job satisfaction conducted by our university association, ninety percent, as I said, of PAs work oh. in clinics unlike in the USA and predominantly in uh, surgical departments. Oh, okay. Yeah, the reasons for this are, I think, on the one hand, that there is a particularly large shortage of uh, staff in surgical departments and mm -hmm. on the other, the current lack of refinancing for PA services in the outpatient sector. They don't get very good pay there. Since they're working mainly in surgery, but they can't, you said that they can't like assist in surgery. So are they doing like pre-op and post-op type things normally? Yes, they do. Um, they provide a continuity in the service for the nurses, for the therapists, and uh, even for the administration, for the relatives. So uh, if surgeons are on, on duty, um, night call and so on, the PA is is there and um, he is uh, addressable for, for the other professions and the patients and their relatives. So, so yeah. that's very, very valuable. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I can see how in the, the setting of what is happening in, in Germany right now and in the scope of practice, how that is, is probably the best place that they can be utilized. One question that I always am curious about when I'm talking to people in other countries about PAs is whether... There is any possibility 
for U.S. trained PAs to go work in Germany as a PA. It is not a problem for U.S. trained PAs to work in clinics in Germany, not in the outpatient sector. And um, I know some, uh, some of them personally. And since the profession is not regulated by law, there is no need for a so-called uh, equivalence test, as there uh -huh. is for nurses, uh, for example. So the employer defines the scope of activities via a job description and includes the PA in their liability insurance, and that's it. On the other hand, regrettably, it is not possible that German PAs work in, uh, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And even if you have earned a medical degree from another country, you must still graduate from an accredited PA program in the U.S. to take this PA national uh, examination. I talked a few years ago about that issue uh, to Dawn Morton Rice, and uh, she didn't uh, give me any hope that it would uh, change in the future. Personally, yeah. I find this isolation uh, very unfortunate because I perceive PA as a global profession and should therefore enable international mobility. The competency frame frameworks refer to globally recognized standards such, such as CANMEETS PA or the WHO framework for universal health coverage, UHC. And our own comparative study of the German and US curricula has shown a high degree of agreement in the medical subjects. In my opinion, the aim should therefore be to improve permeability, even if educational pathways, academic degrees and job titles may differ. I think this will be the task um, of the international well-connected PA community in the coming years. There is an international PA association, correct? There are uh, several organizations, I think, in Europe. Um, I founded the European Network of PA Educators in 2019 on the uh, Netherlands PA Congress. And uh, we have connected to the colleagues in the Netherlands, UK, Ireland, Poland, Switzerland, even um, we try to get connected to the guys in, in, in Bulgaria and Romania and um, we meet regularly and we want to develop a, a European standard. The, the goal is that we want to uh, enable international mobility at first within Europe right. and um, that seems to be possible within the next years. We hope so. And okay. we have a, a very active um, international uh, association of PA educators, the IAPAE. Actually, we uh, have a great project that we uh, map the curricula of every nation against the WHO Universal Health Coverage Framework. And um, so we will get the proof that the education is very similar globally. And I think this is a very decisive uh, step even for, for educators and for politicians to see that the, the, that the education is comparable. And um, I think this will promote the international mobility very much. This is something that's very important to me and I think would be fantastic to be able to be a PA that could, could work around the world. But understanding that, you know, just like with physicians, it is difficult. You can't always just go to another country and be a physician. But I, I think that as the world becomes more and more connected, that we have to figure this stuff out because people are going to want to move and be able to choose where they live and work around the world. And so I'm applauding your your efforts and, and fingers crossed that eventually this happens. So let's talk about the way that medicine just in general is structured in Germany, because I think that's another thing that is helpful to understand how other countries do it so we can figure out what works and, and what doesn't. So how is the healthcare system set up in general in Germany? Is it socialized medicine? Is there private insurance or some kind of mixture? To, to explain the German health system um, is, is a real challenge. I try to give you an overview. <laughs> Therefore, highlight just a few key aspects from my personal point of view. I would also like to take a brief historical look back. 
And it is always interesting to know where systems come from to understand them better. Uh, it was Chancellor Otto von Bismarck who introduced um, a statutory health insurance system at the end of the 19th century, not out of conviction, but to counteract the growing social democratic movement. Nevertheless, it has two essential, uh, very social elements. It is uh, for 90% of the people in Germany, it is uh, a general insurance obligation. The other 10% have a private um, insurance with free access to medical care and a basic principle of solidarity. And I have to explain because it is um, an, an extraordinary move, I think. This means that um, unlike other forms of insurance, the level of contributions is not determined by personal risk, but by income. And employers also pay half of the contributions. So everybody can afford this uh, health insurance. On the other hand, um, I have to admit this contrasts with the highest costs for a healthcare system in Europe due to financial disincentives with only average results in key indicators such as uh, mortality. So there has to be improvement. In some countries, they do a little bit of a mixture, and you said something about private insurance. So can people opt out of the system and, and buy their own private, or is the private insurance kind of supplemental to, to what the, the standard socialized medicine is? It is both. You can um, understand it as an add-on for oh. um, for certain services. And uh, on the other hand, um, if your uh, income is higher than a certain amount, which is defined new every year, you can opt out. Oh, okay. So it doesn't sound very social, um, but uh, on the other hand, um, it uh, supports the medical services because the private insurances normally uh, pay higher for patients. Yeah. Peter, it has been very fascinating. And thank you so much for taking your time and for telling us about the PA profession in Germany. Thank you. I love learning about the PA profession all around the world. If you want to see more of this, then I'll put interviews that I've already done with PAs in other countries over here. Or you can go to the playlist on my main channel page. Thanks for joining me. And as always, take care, stay sane, and I'll see you next time on The Medicine Couch. Bye.